Gus, uh, Professor uh, Alexandre Brookin from Bordeaux, and his first lecture is uh, the theory of the phenomenon. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. So my course will be the most elementary one. <coughs> and today's talk, <coughs> uh, today's lecture will be the most elementary of my course. <coughs> So, uh, our theory is about <coughs> uh, relations of maps. A map is a graph drawn on two-dimensional surface in such a way that the edges do not intersect. And it turns out that this <coughs> these simple objects are related to many domains of mathematics, to permutation groups, to Riemann surfaces, to number fields, to Galois theory, relational function, functions to complex structures <coughs> and so on. Of course it will, will be impossible to <coughs> to speak <coughs> uh, about everything. Uh, so <coughs> I uh, use an expression uh, I bought once a <coughs> small brochure which was called mathematics and physics and it was explained in the first phrases <coughs> that this book is neither about mathematics nor about physics. It is only about end. So <coughs> my talk will be uh, maps and Riemann surfaces. It will be about end. Maps and Galois theory. It will be about end. And so on. <coughs> so let's start with graphs. <coughs> the graph is a set of vertices and edges. Uh, and the first convention, all our graphs <coughs> will be connected and bipartite. What does it mean bipartite? <coughs> it means that uh, the uh, vertices are uh, colored in black and white <coughs> and an edge may connect only black with white. Practically without exceptions, maybe without exceptions at all, <coughs> all graphs will be like that. But sometimes, <coughs> in certain cases, <coughs> it turns out that all white vertices are degree 2, and then we just, <coughs> they are still here, uh, they always exist, but sometimes we do not draw them, <coughs> just we uh, simplify the picture and uh, <coughs> leave only black vertices on the picture. So this is so-called usual map, <coughs> which is in fact like that. So this picture on the right is correct picture, but this one is simpler to look at. This is the same graph. <coughs> okay, so white vertices sometimes will be hidden and <coughs> Maybe sometimes will be an ambi ambiguity between <coughs> the two usage of the word edge. <coughs> uh, edge is always something which connects black and white, but sometimes I will speak about these edges if there are only black vertices. So we will see. <coughs> uh, the parallel edges I admitted, <coughs> and in a way, loops are also also admitted, since <coughs> if we take a loop, it is in fact a, uh, a graph like that, uh, so there are just two parallel edges. But all graphs are connected. <coughs> what, what is a map? When we draw a graph, for example on a piece of paper, we add to it an additional structure. Namely, there is a circular order of edges around each vertex. Uh, <coughs> and in this way we obtain a map. So, uh, definition, a map is a graph drawn on a compact, oriented, not only orientable, but already <coughs> oriented, two-dimensional manifold, in such a way that the edges do not intersect. And the complement to the graph <coughs> uh, is uh, a disjoint union of simple con simply connected domains, uh, something homeomorphic to open disks. These regions are called faces, and I just uh, mentioned that a graph has only vertices and edges, 
but a map has vertices, edges, and faces. <coughs> For example, <coughs> on the upper level, there, are, there is the same graph, but two different maps. You might, we might, must take care these maps are drawn not, in fact, on the plane, but on the sphere. So there are, <coughs> there are two faces, the inside and the outside, the outer face and the inner face. They are not specially distinguished, <coughs> but uh, if we consider the degrees, I will de define later what are degrees of faces. So on the left, the degrees are 1 and 5, on the right, 3 and 3. And this is not a map. So will you explain why, why you call these maps? Huh? Will you explain why you use the, the, the word maps? Uh, because it's an unusual, I mean, maps. Uh, why, why do you call these maps? Uh, in combinatorics, everybody call, calls them maps. So. Uh, it is like like map card. Ah, can, man, uh, I see. Okay. Not not mapping. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, geographic map. Geographic yeah. map. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. So this is not a map because there is one face which is a face, and the other one which is not a face. It is not simply connected. It is not homeomorphic to an open disk. <coughs> and <coughs> the outer face is not distinguished. When we draw a map on a piece of paper, <coughs> uh, it is naturally distinguished. But on the sphere, you may take any uh, any face and consider it as an outer face. So this is the same map. <coughs> uh, but uh, okay, uh, there are three faces, and I just took every one of them uh, as being the outer face. So <coughs> here, for example, uh, this uh, thing is outside, and these two edges are inside. We just <coughs> took outside and inside. And here, this small uh, small face of degree 1 is taken here as the outer face. Okay. <coughs> well, and just <coughs> to mention that a graph does not determine uh, the genus of the map. Here we have the same graph, which is K4, <coughs> the complete graph with four vertices, four vertices, and every vertex is connected with all the other vertices. Okay, so <coughs> on the upper level, it is a usual drawing of this graph on the, on the sphere. There are four triangles, three inside and one outside. And here, the same graph, we see that every uh, vertex is connected to, with, to all the three other vertices. <coughs> it's the same graph but drawn in such a way that there are only two faces. Uh, one is here of degree 4. Uh, for, the <coughs> for the other uh, face, one, one must <coughs> uh, took some, <coughs> some work to see that it is indeed a face, and that this face is unique, and of degree 8, it needs some, some drawing, <coughs> so it needs some time. <coughs> to understand, but there is, there is one face of degree 8. Okay, so <coughs> determining the least genus of a given graph is LP-complete. That is, in fact, we may say that, <coughs> may say that there is no good algorithm to determine the least genus of a given graph, but that, that is the least genus of a surface on which this graph can be drawn without self-intersection without intersection of edges. <coughs> but determining the maximum genus is polynomial. The wife is, the wife is like that. Okay, <coughs> for the isomorphism of maps, many times I <coughs> saw the wrong definition. Two maps are isomorphic if one can be 
gradually and continuously deformed into the other. It works only on this sphere. On other surfaces, it doesn't work. <coughs> so the correct definition to maps are isomorphic. There exists a homeomorphism of the surface which transforms one map to the other. So uh, if we cut the torus along this circle, <coughs> turn uh, uh, one part to 360 degrees and glue them together, we obtain <coughs> this picture. And these two maps are isomorphic. They are changed one from the other by a homeomorphism uh, <coughs> of the torus, which is represented as one dental twist in this particular case. So <coughs> each edge is incident to one black vertex by construction, to one white vertex, and something unusual uh, will be the next convention, each edge will be adjacent to only one face, not to two faces, but to only one face. It is convenient because <coughs> in bipartite uh, uh, maps, <coughs> in bipartite graphs, all, all circuits are of <coughs> even length. So it is, it is convenient to divide this number by two. And then, <coughs> The sum of degrees of the black vertices is equal to the sum of degrees of the white vertices and is equal to the sum of degrees of the faces, and this is the number of edges. <coughs> so uh, the edge is adjacent to the face which is on the left of this edge if we go from black to white. And <coughs> this Definition is consistent with usual notion of <coughs> degree. So the degree of a face is the number of incident edges. And it is co uh, <coughs> coherent with, with, the usual, with the usual definition. So here we have a face of degree 4. And if we uh, recall that there are white vertices inside these edges, we see that there are <coughs> one, two, three, and four edges incident, edges, <coughs> black white edges, uh, two edges incident to this face. <coughs> Here we have a face of degree two, and <coughs> there are two edges incident to this face, this one and this one. Uh, <coughs> and we may verify that it works every time. So for usual maps, it is just the number of edges which surround this face. <coughs> for uh, bipartite maps, for bicolor maps, it is the number of, <coughs> of edges uh, <coughs> which are incident to this face according to our new definition. So, so given, an, given an edge, you choose which of the, of the yes. two faces is, is Yes, <coughs> an edge may distinguish maybe a, a border between two faces, but it belongs only to one face. Okay. <coughs> uh, we will see on this example why this is uh, a, convenient, a convenient definition. <coughs> so, maps can be encoded by triples of permutations. There is a tradition to denote these permutations, maybe a French tradition to denote these permutations, sigma, alpha, and phi. Sigma like somme, which vertices in French. Alpha like aret, which is edges in French. And phi like fas, which is faces in French. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> black vertices. The permutation corresponding to the black vertices <coughs> shows how the edges uh, show, shows this circular order of edges around black vertices. So let us take this vertex. <coughs> we see that in trigonometric order there are one, two, three. And 
it, it is this the cycle here. Here there are one and <coughs> five. Four and five, but so uh, they correspond to this cycle. <coughs> uh, six is a uh, fixed point, it is a vertex of degree one, so here there is a fi fixed point. And seven, eight, nine <coughs> is this black vertex. Now, alpha corresponds to white vertices. One, four is this vertex. Uh, <coughs> two, nine, three is the, this one. Two, nine, three. Always in trigonometric order. Uh, five, six, seven. Where is it? Uh, here, five, six, seven. <coughs> and eight is a fixed point. <coughs> Now faces, always the same trigonometric order inside the face, one, five, nine. <coughs> so the labels, <coughs> I, I put the labels on the left bank, on the left side of every edge if we go from black to white. And it is convenient because the <coughs> labels corresponding to faces are always inside the, these faces. So there is one face uh, which corresponds to the cycle 159. There is one face of degree 1 which corresponds to the <coughs> edge 2. And there is an <coughs> outer face which corresponds to the cycle 38764. Just look outside 38764. You maybe have an impression that this time the orientation is <coughs> clockwise and not counterclockwise, but in fact it is counterclockwise if we look from the other side of the sphere, from the opposite side of the sphere. Now, <coughs> an interesting remark and very important is that uh, the product of these three permutations is equal to one. So in fact we need only two of them. The third one <coughs> Uh, may be computed. Uh, just to note, we multiply permutations from left to right. <coughs> In many books of group theory, they are uh, multiplied from uh, right to left, but <coughs> if we use a, a system of symbolic computation like maple or gap or the, uh, any other one, the multiplication is always from left to right because uh, <coughs> computing it is uh, usual order. So we multiply right them action. from left to right. For example, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 9, and 9 goes to 1. <coughs> well, <coughs> this is an <coughs> explanation why this is the case. So. We take the label I, rotate it <coughs> around the black vertex and get J, rotate J around the white vertex and get K, and rotate K inside the face and return to I. So <coughs> the explanation is very simple, in fact. Uh, <coughs> and uh, just <coughs> to note that uh, we saw two isomorphic maps. Let us consider <coughs> a small neighborhood of the black vertex and label, label these edges like 1, 2, 3, 4, and we see that uh, the labels are the same in the same order in, in both maps. Uh, while <coughs> alpha correspond, corresponds to white vertices which are invisible, but they are middle points of these <coughs> usual edges. So they are 1, 3, and 2, 4, and phi is computed. <coughs> so, so there is only one face, and everything is okay. So <coughs> the, this permutation model corresponds well to this. <coughs> maybe a little bit complicated notion of isomorphic maps on surfaces which are different from the sphere. 
Now, just several remarks on the complexity problems. <coughs> the graph isomorphism problem is <coughs> one of the most difficult problems in <coughs> uh, uh, one of the most difficult <coughs> uh, algorithmic problem <coughs> because <coughs> There are NP-complete problems which are difficult to solve, but uh, at least there, uh, the proofs, there exist proofs that they are difficult. There are polynomial problems for, for, for which there are good algorithms. But for graph isomorphism, <coughs> this problem is neither NP-complete, so there is no proof in, of NP-completeness and no polynomial algorithm. And <coughs> Uh, the majority of people believe that the complexity is in fact intermediate between the two. Neither NP complete nor <coughs> polynomial. Uh, okay, so the for bicolor graph graphs it is not it is not easier. <coughs> All that is just <coughs> in order to to know that <coughs> for map isomorphism. Uh, this problem is very easy. Isomorphisms of, map, of maps <coughs> is a, uh, a polynomial with a very simple algorithm of quadratic complexity. <coughs> so we take uh, one map, uh, label it, <coughs> take the other map, label it, and then we see if <coughs> the label one goes to the label i on the, on the other map, then sigma of 1 must go to sigma of i, alpha of 1 must go to alpha of y, <coughs> of i, uh, phi also, and so on, and so on. Uh, and in this way we can verify if, uh, if it works, it works. If, if not, we just, <coughs> we just take, uh, for i, we take uh, all the labels, 1, 2, 3, and so on, so <coughs> n times verification of, of length n. So <coughs> the isomorphism of maps is an easy problem. Now, <coughs> the thing which is uh, rather funny is that we make a drawing. So we get, we, we take a picture, a map. <coughs> uh, we obtain a triple of permutations in fact even two permutations and we get as a result a group generated by these permutations and some some things may, may be rather funny <coughs> uh, I just recall that here we see four edges but in fact there are eight edges if we put uh, inside <coughs> any edge a white vertex so the group corresponding to this guy is PSL27. Uh, the group corresponding to these ones is Mathieu group M12. <coughs> uh, so, for example, if you are in a desert and you forgot how to generate the Mathieu group M12, <coughs> it is much easier to recall, for example, this little picture. <coughs> Uh, somebody like it. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the generators. So it is much easier then to, to recall the permutations or some other <coughs> actions. Uh, <coughs> these pictures generate the Matthew group M24, <coughs> which, uh, according to John Conway, is the most remarkable finite group. Mathieu groups, five Mathieu groups are the only <coughs> simple finite groups which uh, were discovered in the 19th century. Uh, so they form the beginning of these sporadic <coughs> simple groups, first five elements. You know the order of the group? Hmm? What's the order of the group? M24. Some three hundred thousand, uh, so, so, something like that. I, I do not remember by heart. For M12, it is ninety-five thousand forty. But 
for M24, I do not remember. <coughs> These examples are not, not frequent. So, <coughs> for example, there exist uh, 7 billion <coughs> plane trees with uh, 23 edges, but only 4 of them represent uh, the Matiobu M23. Uh, with these two and their mirror images. All the other generate either A23 or S23, either symmetric or alternating. <coughs> this example is very funny. The group is also much your group M22. Uh, the degrees of black vertices and the degrees of white vertices and the degrees of faces are the same. Uh, 4 times 4, 2 times 2, and 2 times 1. But what is interesting is that <coughs> in this group there are two uh, conjugacy classes uh, with this cycle structure. It is quite a usual situation when there are several <coughs> uh, conjugacy classes with the same cycle structures. But usually <coughs> these classes are degrees uh, of, of uh <coughs> every class is, uh, is composed of permutations which are degrees of the permutations of other classes. So there is a conjugacy class. If you take cubes of this <coughs> of these permutations we get another class. If we take ninth degree, we, we take one more class and so on. <coughs> so the usual situation is like that. But this situation is rather exceptional. There are two, <coughs> uh, two conjugacy classes with this set of degrees, with this set of <coughs> cycle lengths. And they are not algebraically, not Galois conjugate to each other. <coughs> they, they are even of different size. Uh, in the atlas, in the famous atlas of finite groups, the, the class is denoted by 4a and 4b. Uh, and here all, <coughs> uh, all three permutations belong to the class 4b. There are also examples with the same set of degrees when there are 4a, 4b, 4b, and so on. So some phenomena are very subtle. Okay, an automorphism group, we consider only orientation preserving automorphisms, is the centralizer of, uh, uh, I didn't pronounce, the more cartographic group, the group generated by our three permutations, we call, call it cartographic group. Uh, <coughs> so, the automorphism group is the centralizer of the cartographic group inside SN. So the mirror I I symmetry is not an automorphism, <coughs> even uh, if the map is symmetric to itself. And the automorphism group respects the incidence relations while the cartographic group does not. Cartographic group <coughs> When we rotate, when we take an edge and, uh, uh, incident to a black vertex and turn it and to consider the next edge, it is no longer incident to the white vertex to its <coughs> uh, white vertex uh, of, on the opposite side. While the automorphism group pre uh, preserves, preserves this relation. Uh, well, <coughs> Maybe I skip this subject. It is an exciting subject of regular maps, but it is too vast to speak about it. Uh, only a few words. <coughs> uh, a map is regular if, uh, if the automorphism group is <coughs> uh, isomorphic to the cartographic group.
regular maps are enumerated up to the genus, up to the genus <coughs> uh, 101. And ordinary, what we call up, up to the genus 301. There are many, many of them. Okay. <coughs> uh, the situation is even more interesting since uh, there is the opposite way. The, uh, taking a triple of permutations, we can get a map. So for any triple of permutations such that <coughs> first the product, second the product is equal to one, and first the group generated by these permutations acts transitively on edges, <coughs> there corresponds a map, a bipartite map. The cycles of sigma correspond to black vertices, the cycles of alpha correspond to white <coughs> vertices, the cycles of phi correspond to faces. The Euler characteristic is easy to compute. The number of vertices is here, sigma <coughs> is alpha, black and white vertices, plus the number of faces minus the number of edges gives the Euler characteristic. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> why, uh, how, how can we see that uh, these permutations generate a map? So what is a manifold? Of course, everybody here knows what is a manifold. But just <coughs> so uh, <coughs> a small portion of of this space resembles uh, <coughs> a small portion of Euclidean Euclidean plane, plane or in bigger dimension the Euclidean space. So this is a chart of a small region of a manifold. Okay, uh, globally, uh, globally picture may look different. For example, like that. <coughs> so we can imagine the travel of Magellan uh, uh, started in Europe and then returned. <coughs> it's on back. <laughs> uh, okay, he didn't return, but his. <coughs> Uh, one of his maps can return to the initial point and people thought that the, uh, our planet is a sphere uh, which, uh, <laughs> which was not a consequence of the table. <coughs> okay, an important ingredient of the definition is the possibility to recompute the coordinates <coughs> of the same point in one chart and in another chart. So here is, here is, you see, Irma, <coughs> and here it is Irma, okay, two charts, and we m must be able to compute the coordinates of the previous chart as a function of the coordinates of this chart and vice versa. So the manifolds are <coughs> classified according to according to the nature of these functions which compute new coordinates as functions of the previous ones. So topological <coughs> manifolds when f is supposed to be continuous, smooth when f, all these functions f are supposed to be smooth, complex analytic, algebraic and so on. So the complex structure <coughs> will be important, will be important later, but by now uh, I would like just to, to, to see how I get the topological <coughs> space. So, uh, <coughs> first of all, I take uh, polygons which correspond to the cycles of phi. Polygons which, wi with their inside, uh, with interior. Then I glue these polygons, poly polygons to uh, <coughs> in pairs, uh, and permutations give me the information I need. Uh, which pairs of edges uh, should I glue uh, to each other? <coughs> we need two minutes. I don't have two minutes uh, to spare minutes, but <coughs> if we consider how the permutations act, we will see. 
easily which edge should be should be glued to which one. So finally, <coughs> inside a polygon, it is uh, homeomorphic to an open disk <coughs> uh, uh, by construction. Near the edge, it is homeomorphic to an open disk because there are only two faces which are glued together, exactly two. <coughs> and around the vertex, it is homeomorphic to an open disk because of this circular order of edges and polygons around this vertex. And this gives us the definition of <coughs> the definition of the uh, manifold. Okay, <coughs> an example. So having the permutational model we can compute maps even when <coughs> it is difficult to draw them. So I will uh, show how to draw the graph of icosahedron. The icosahedron is considered as a polyhedron or <coughs> as a map on the sphere, but I will draw the same graph on the manifold of genus 4. So let us take the usual icosahedron. We see 30 <coughs> edges, but in fact there are 60. If we put a white vertex in the middle point of every edge, so we take the corresponding permutations, sigma, alpha, and phi, and replace sigma with sigma square. And so the operation is like that. We replace, we remove sigma and put sigma square. Now we have a triple of permutations, sigma square, the same alpha as before, and phi must be computed. Phi, phi is computed as the inverse of, uh, of the product of the two permutations. Okay? So the black vertices remain the same sin since <coughs> in sigma there were cycles of order 5, a square is also a cycle of order 5 with the same points. So the black vertices remain the same. The white vertices, I didn't touch them at all. <coughs> they correspond to the middle points of the edges. So the graph remains the same. Since black and white vertices remain the same. Okay, so the, all we need is to compute faces. In fact, it, it is sufficient to <coughs> to see uh, what is one face because of the symmetry all other faces will be of the same size. So, <coughs> maybe I, I return here. What does it mean to take sigma square? So, we uh, go along this edge and take not the next one, but uh, the one after the next. Then we approach this vertex and take the edge after the next. Then we approach this vertex and take the edge after the next. And the same thing here. So we see that the face is a pentagon. It turns out that <coughs> all faces become uh, faces of degree 5. <coughs> Their number is therefore 12. We divide 60 by 5. <coughs> and we may compute the Euler characteristic. 12 vertices minus 30. Okay, here I compute, uh, here I consider usual edges. So 12. <coughs> Vertices minus 30 edges plus 12 faces is minus 6. Therefore, genus is equal to 5. So we draw this graph, draw, we compute it. <coughs> uh, a graph which is the same graph as uh, the icosahedron, but which is drawn on the surface of genus <coughs> 4. All faces are of degree 5. And uh, 
This picture is even better than the previous one since uh, the map is self-dual. Uh, for the usual Poseidon, <coughs> vertices are degree 5, faces are degree 3. But for this map, vertices are degree 5 and faces are degree 5. <coughs> and if we draw the dual map, it is isomorphic to the initial one. The automorphism group is, is the same, remains the same. <coughs> it was A5 for the uh, icosahedron. So <coughs> if H commutes with sigma, then it, it commutes with sigma squared. <coughs> but if H commutes with sigma squared, it also commutes with sigma since sigma squared square is sigma minus 1. So the automorphism group of this <coughs> map is the same, A5 as for the icosahedron. <coughs> if we draw two maps, this one and the dual one together, we get even uh, even bigger group, uh, S5. So can we really draw this map? <coughs> for many years, I <coughs> used to say that I'm completely unable to draw this map. Then I decided that I must <coughs> take courage and try to draw it. Uh, <coughs> but uh, I encountered a terrible difficulty because <coughs> if we take, if we take, if we uh, would like to draw <coughs> a map on the sphere which has 12 vertices of degree 5 and <coughs> 20 faces of degree 3, 20 triangles, then there is only one map like that. Now, if we take a surface of genus 4 and try to draw <coughs> a map with 12 vertices of degree 5 and 12 faces of degree 5, there are more than 4 million maps like that. So it is not at all sufficient to get the right degrees of vertices and faces. Not at all. <coughs> This is a difficult computation. I am even amazed that Maple was <coughs> able to to uh, to carry out this computation because the character table of this group is uh, of this size million, approximately million by million, but it worked. Okay. <coughs> However, these two pictures, <coughs> I prefer the right one. Uh, these two pictures show our face and our graph. So you may believe me or not, but <coughs> this picture on the on the right, by the way, in the in, in our coffee room, uh, there is a figure like that. It is called usually small stellated dodecahedron. So <coughs> this is the surface of genus four, which is immersed, not embedded, but immersed with the self-intersections in our space of dimension 3. To see that, <coughs> we may take just, <coughs> just the vertex here uh, and see that if we take the... Uh, so we approach the vertex here, uh, take the next edge, go here, take, take the next edge, go here, Say the next edge go here. Maybe I uh, I lost my way, but okay. <laughs> there are <coughs> there are faces of degree. There are circles, uh, circuits of degree five of level five. So the faces are of degree five. They intersect each other, but uh, uh, it is like that. <coughs> and we see even. Uh, more than that, for example, we see that <coughs> unlike uh, the usual icosahedron, uh, if we take a rotation of order 5, then not only two opposite vertices are invariant, but also there are two faces which are invariant <coughs> under this rotation. Uh, it's time to stop. Uh, so the next... <coughs> the next Topic will be Billy functions, which is the main notion uh, of the theory of descent on form. But today the introduction is finished. <coughs> Uh, 
Saudi independent? Uh. <laughs> 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 